Okay, this is the Mega Minx. It has uh, 12 sides. Each is a pentagon. So there are five sides. The centers are also little pentagons and their quote unquote edges make up a star. And then the corners of which there are five, are like on a three by three having three stickers, whereas the edges only have two. So I'm not going to go through the entire solve slowly on this, but I will go through the process of how I do it. So I start with the white. I have the center oriented toward me, and I find all of the white edges. So I, for example, can have this white edge lined up there, but this needs to be on the red side. So I'll line this red edge with the red center. So here is a purple one. So I would find where the purple is, and it's over here. So I can rotate this around and then move this slice up. So there I have the purple one. I will find the green. Here it is. Line it up with its center. Move it around to the white. Here's the blue and white one. So to move it out of the way, I'm gonna either have to move this one for a moment or this one. So I'll just move it up to this slice, spin it out of the way, and then move this back. Come on. This puzzle has to be aligned perfectly or these don't turn very well. I'm probably going to be getting a magnetic one in the future that will help with that. At any rate, I moved that out of the way to get this piece off of this position. So now I can return this and I can move this around. I don't want it like that, obviously. So I can move it one further and then move this slice and that aligns the blue. And now I can spin that around. And we have the blue side of the edge and the center, and I now need the yellow and white. So I need to find it, which is always tricky finding these pieces since there are so many sides. Ah, here it is. So I will move it around, line up the yellow, and then move it around to the white. And there is the white star, which is the first step. Now that we have the white star, we want to do the white corners. So I'll look for one. Here's one with white. It's got purple and yellow. So we know it goes between the purple and yellow, so down here. Now, if the white sticker is on top, we could do a series of moves, but what I like to do is just reorient it so it's either facing this way or facing this way. So what we'll do is we'll just temporarily move this piece, but that is moving this out of the way for a moment. We'll move this piece out of the way, and then we'll move this back. And what that's done is that has made it so now when we position this corner over where it belongs, the white sticker is facing this way. So on this, much like with a three by three, we move the slice it's on away from the slice it's going to go into. We bring the position where it's going to go up. We move it over to get it and we move it back down. And that has solved the white corner. What I would do next is probably this edge, but sometimes I go ahead and finish all the corners first. So we will find other white corners. 
Here is a red and green one, which goes here. This time the sticker is facing this way, so we move this out of the way this way, move the slice up to get it over and down. And here's a yellow and blue one. So let's move that over to where it belongs, which is here, the yellow and blue, so it belongs down here. Sticker's facing this way, so we move the slice out of the way, bring that up to get it, and move it back down. Okay, and now we need two more pieces. Okay, there's a white one that's purple and green, so that goes here. So if I rotate it like that, again, it's facing up, which is not exactly how I want it, so I'll just rotate it to get it the orientation I want. Move it to set this slice back. And now when I move it over, that's facing the correct way I want. Then I can insert it. And in the process, I noticed the other one, which is the red, white, and blue, which goes over here. Always. So, just keep spinning it until you get it over the corner it needs to go to. Bring the piece up, and now we have the white all done with its corners. Now we do these edge pieces that touch the white corners we just did. So here we have green and red, so we need to find the green and red edge there which is hiding from me. Where are you? Ah, there it is. So to move it up to a slice where it's not affecting this corner, we could arbitrarily put a piece there, but instead let's just find what belongs here. So this belongs, it's the red and blue piece. So let's find that. There it is. So what we do is we spin it around so that, since it's red and blue, either the red has to match, sorry, the red side, which that doesn't, it's blue, or the blue has to match the blue side. So that's good. So we can have that here. Since we're moving here, this is like inserting an edge, the beginner's method on the three by three. We want to put this down here. So we move this away, bring this up to get it, move it back over and down to meet these two up. Now we know how to insert if it's pointed this way. So we're inserting these two pieces together by moving it out of the way, over and down. And so we will repeat that for all of the edge pieces here. So here's the red and green, it's now out of the way. Again, figure out which of these line up. So green lines up with that. We do our edge insert moves like we would on a three by three. And we have that. So here's purple and green. Okay, and we need purple and yellow. There it is. Position it over the purple. Bring that over. This is not really a tutorial. This is more just for my benefit, so I'm not explaining everything I'm doing exactly. This assumes you know how to solve a three by three with the beginner's method. So I'll line up the yellow, move this up and down to there and then over. Okay, now we have all of the white and each piece that's touching it with its edges 
touching its, their corners. The way I proceed now is in an orderly fashion. I will complete the yellow side and then I'll move around the puzzle this way doing purple, then green, then red and blue, and there are some tricky maneuvers with the red and blue, but first let me do each of these. So we'll do the yellow first. So every now and then I like to just double check what I've done to make sure I haven't messed anything up. So white's still good, yellow's good, purple's good, and now we're going to do green. find this edge which is here so that's lined up we move it out of the way so of course I wouldn't have had to move it over and then move it back but this is the more step-by-step -step process so I've moved it over bring this up to get it move it back come down and it's paired up the edge with the corner or in And now we're doing the red and blue. And the red and blue, since it's the last part at this level, is a little trickier, but I'll show you how we approach it. All right, the way to approach this, I always do this the same way, and it's sort of like an extension of doing F2L. Basically what we need to do, we only have the gray side that's free to work, and we're working sort of on this pink side and we have a little bit of this. We don't wanna mess up what we've done here, but I'll show you what we can deal with. So for right now, we wanna concentrate on the piece that goes here, here, and here. This happens to be the piece that's gonna be here. So we need to find first this edge, which is pink and dark blue. So here it is. We need to first align the right side with the edge. So I will move it over here so I can move this down like that. Now I did disturb this, so what I want to do is just move this out of the way for a minute, and then I can reset this. So that's all good over here. Now what I have is this lined up, which is good. The next thing I want to do is I need to rotate this 
so that this piece is in the right place here. So the pink and the blue is correctly oriented and positioned there. We ultimately will want this. And so here's the problem, just to show you. So we really need a corner there that's got the blue on it. But the only way we know to insert this corner with blue would be to put that position here to insert it, but that's going to disturb this. So what we do instead is we need to take this piece that is the red and pink edge and get it out of down here. So we're going to disturb this momentarily by just turning this up to the top gray level and moving it out of the way and then moving this back. Okay, so that's out of the way. We also want this pink, blue, and red piece on this gray level. So if it had been down here, we would also want to move it out of the way. So now that we have this, these two pieces on the top here, and this one correctly positioned, we want to match up this piece with the edge. So what I usually do is I turn this slice so that this piece with the blue on it is over, and ignore this piece for a minute, is over here on top of sort of the red side here. But again, don't pay attention to these other pieces. We don't really want blue on top. So what I want to do is I want to rotate it so that this piece is on the top level, but blue is not on top. So actually what I'm going to do is undo what I just did, and I'm going to move this back to here, because if I rotate this slice momentarily so that I can get this out of the way, then I can rotate the gray slice, just get it out of the way in the back, and I'll just put this back. So we're back to that, and we have our two pieces back here that are on the top slice. Now, these are our two target pieces right now, the red and pink edge and the red and pink with blue corner. We want to pair these up first before we insert down here. It's unfortunate that they're together right now because they're not correct. So what we really want to do is if we move this, and this is like F2L, if you think about this being the white. So what we really want to do is be able to move this piece in the direction of the colors. So we could either move it this way or this way without disturbing something. So if we moved it that way right now, we would disturb this. If we move it that way or we move it that way, we're disturbing things that are done. So I'm going to again rotate. No, I'm not. I guess we could, ro we can't rotate this this way because that would disturb an edge we've already done here. But what we could do is rotate it this way. This edge is not already attended to, so we can break these up now by just moving this out of the way for a minute over here, and we'll put this back. All right, that was a stupid way to do it, but that broke up this piece with this piece. Now I'm going to put this back to here because I like it to be here just to think about this. So what we now want to do is we want to match this piece up with its edge. Whoops, with its edge, which is right there. Moving this only the way of the colors that aren't blue. So if I moved this this way, red would then be on top. So what I really want is this edge piece to be over here so that when I move that, it goes and grabs it. So I'm going to temporarily move this out of the way on this slice where I can play. I'm going to move this around so that this edge is where I said it would have to be. And I can bring this back to where it was. Now, and I haven't messed anything else up, as you notice, this piece is still where it needs to be. So now I can bring this corner over, turning the way of these colors that aren't blue. It not only lines up the red, but also the pink. I can move it out of the way and then move this slice back because we know it's always a good idea <clears throat> to undo anything that you'd already done in case you would mess something up. All right, so now these two are together and we can insert them into this corner. 
But the way we do that is we don't position it over this corner as we normally would, because I said before that would mess up this. So instead, just this time only, what we do is this interesting little move. We take this target position and we rotate it so it's right over here. And we're pretending, and this gives us the clue, that this is the blue side on the bottom. So we want to position this blue corner pair that we just did so it's over the position where we want it to go. And then we insert it like we would normally insert. So we know blue goes on the bottom. It's facing this way, so we move this slice out of the way that way, move this slice up to get it, move this over, and then bring it back down. And so that is inserted that pair we set up here. And now we just rotate this one more time. And we have this three piece corner done there, which is what this laborious process was trying to do. Now we can insert this corner as per usual. So we find the red with pink and cream, which is over here going to move it up to this slice. Don't want to disturb any of this. So I'm just going to get it out of the way for a minute and move this back. Sorry, I keep going out of view. I'm trying to reach around the camera. All right, so this piece goes down here. Red goes on the bottom. So we do the insert, move it away, come up and get it, move it down. Now we want to put this edge like we normally would. So we need the yellow and pink lined up. So I really wouldn't have had to move it over because we're just going to move it back out of the way, bring it up to get it, pair them up, come back over. Come on, move it back down. Sorry, it's stuck there for a minute. And we have now finished that part over there. So what we now need to do is put the pink edge there which is this gray and pink one. It's turned the wrong way. So I will just momentarily move this out of the way. No, I won't. So that was good I tried that because if I had tried to move this, it would disrupt this, which we don't want. If I move this, what am I trying to do? I am trying to get the pink. I'm trying to get this so that the gray matches with that gray. So well before I do that maybe this will help. Let me insert this blue corner over here. So we know it's the last blue corner. We do that. Now what we need here this edge is the pink and green. So it's that, line that up, move it away, come up to get it, move it down. We paired those up, go back to insert, and we have that done. Oh, I got ahead of myself. Yeah, that's what we wanted to do. So now that we have done the white, the yellow, the purple, the green, the red, and the blue, we also have all of these other sides done except for the gray slice. And the gray slice is handled separately and with some algorithms. So I will be right back for that. Okay, the first thing to do when we're working on the gray slice is to get all of the gray points up on the top level. This is like doing the beginner's method and on a three by three, getting all the yellow cross pieces on the top. So what I do is a series of F sexy moves. I start with any gray points that are already there over to the left and or up. Right now we only have the one. And then I do the F sexy move. So this is the F face. If I'm holding it this way. So we do an F. And then sexy is R. U, R prime, U prime, and then move, undo the F, so it's an F prime. OK, 
Okay, that has put a couple more up there. Right now we don't worry about where they're aligned. So again, I move this so that we have a gray up here and a gray over here, sort of at the 12 o'clock and nine o'clock position and do F sexy again. F, R, U, R prime, U prime, F prime. Okay, that didn't help. So then sometimes I'll just rotate this. Still have this corner or this kind of 90 degree business. F, R, U, R prime, U prime, F prime. Still don't have them all. F, R, U, R prime, U prime, F prime. And there, now we have all of the gray edges on the top. I will rotate this just to see how many colors line up. If all of these lined up properly, then it would be done with this step. But of course, here we don't. Here we only have two. So the moves now that we're going to do, are we're going to do a soon, modified for the Mega Minx. If you remember a soon on the three by three, there's a place in there where you move the upper layer twice. If you remember my videos from the pyramid, which has one fewer edge, so a cube obviously has four edges, a pyramid has three edges. In that one in the soon move, instead of the double move, of the U2, it's just a single move of the U2. Well, this is sort of similar in that we can extrapolate since this is a five-sided face. Instead of moving it twice in that U move on the soon like you did on the three by three, on this one, we're gonna move it three times. So I'll show you what I mean. So in the soon move, this edge stays where it is and this edge stays where it is. All of these others will rotate counterclockwise. So if I do the soon move right now, the green will stay here, the cream will stay there, orange will move counterclockwise over to here, pink to here, and blue over to here. So we could do that, but what I'm really trying to do right now is I'm trying to match up two that are adjacent. So I'd like the pink to come over here. So I could do the anti-soon move, which I will show you possibly at the end of this video. But if you just wanna learn the soon move, we know that if we do the soon move twice, it will keep moving it around. So if I move, do the soon move once, it should move this pink one over to here. If I do it again, it should move it over to here, skipping these two that are stationary. Then these two will be together and I'll show you where we go from there. So let's do the soon move. So we do R, U, R prime, U, R. Instead of U2 here, we do U3, R prime. So in fact, that has moved the pink over there. It's moved what was there over here and that over there. So if we do this one more time, it should move the pink over to here because it skips these two stationary ones. So R U R prime U R U three R prime. And there it has moved that over there. So now what we want to do is still the soon, but we want to reorient this puzzle so that the two that are solved, that are the right colors that are next to each other, are in these two stationary positions. So now we'll be rotating with the soon move these three and it'll work on the same principle. If we do it once, it will move this counterclockwise, the blue to there, the orange to here, and the cream to here, which is exactly what we want. If we needed to move them twice, we'd have to do it twice. So we'll do it again. R, U, R prime, U, R, U, three. R prime. And now it has correctly put all of these gray edges in the right places. 
Okay, now that we have all of the star pieces with the edges correct, we want to make it so all of these corner pieces have gray facing up. This is similar to the three by three after you've done the yellow cross where you do the yellow corners facing up. We don't care how they're positioned yet as with regards to if they're in the right slot, but we do want the gray to be up. So what we do for this is we position one that's wrong. So this one obviously is already facing up in this top right front position right here. And we do this series of moves until this gray sticker is on top. We bring this to us. So in our prime, bring this over, bring this slice back up with an R and bring this piece back over. And we keep doing that. So let's do that again. We'll bring this down, over, up, over, down, over, up, over, down, over, up. And remember, even when there's gray on top, to finish your moves by moving this back over. Now, don't panic. We have some things down here that are all messed up. But you'll be fine if you don't rotate the puzzle, but you just rotate this slice to bring another one that's not finished on top here. So we'll do this. This one needs gray on top. We'll repeat those moves. Down, over, up, over, down, over, up. There's gray, but we need to finish. Move that back over. And keep going until we finish all of the gray. So here's one down, over, up, over, down, over, up, over, <clears throat> excuse me, move this back over, there's the last one left, down, over, up, over, down, over, up, over, down, over, up, over, down, over, up, and over. That has put the gray all facing up. We can rotate the top so that the edges are realigned. So cream is over cream, pink, green, etc. And all of the gray stickers are on top and we have not disrupted anything else on the puzzle. And so our final step is to put these corners in their right positions. Now that we have all of our gray edges correctly placed and all of the gray corners with the gray stickers facing up, we just need to put these in their proper locations. So start with one that is unsolved, which in my case is all of them, but we'll just start here. We'll position this in this front upper right position where I like to have my working area. And we're going to do these moves. We're going to move this down and then out of the way to the left to start. Move this back up. And that's only three moves. And now when it's like this, we need to look at this piece that we moved and see what colors are there in addition to the gray. So we have green and pink. So we find the pink and green edges so here's the pink, we rotate the top until the pink and green, we wanna put it in between those two. So that target piece is back on top here. What we wanna do now is move this piece down to that layer. And we wanna take this piece that we were just looking at and move it over to there and then move this piece up to where it belongs. Now, don't panic. Again, there are some things that are off here, but don't worry. So what we do now is we look at this piece and see what colors are there. So in addition to the gray, we have the orange and the blue. So we find we rotate this until the slot where it goes is here. And that's not it because that's green and orange. There we go. Orange and blue. This is orange and blue, so it needs to go here. So this is similar to what we did last time, but you'll notice where this one moves is not that way. So when we move this down, this is moved over here. So now we want to just bring it before it had moved over here. So we want to just bring it around to where it needs to go and bring this back up. 
and now that's in the right place. And again, this is messed up. Don't worry about it. Let's just rotate this to find the slot where this goes. Now this is orange and green. So here's the orange and here's the green. So this is where this goes. So we bring this piece down, we replace it with the correct one, and we move that back up. Okay, that's great. And the last one we need to do is the blue and the cream. So it probably is that one. So we'll slide this around. Oh, it's not. That one is the pink and white, which is that one, but it's in the wrong orientation. So we'll ignore that for a minute. And we need to put this here. So we bring this down, move this over where it's in the right place, and move that up. And then our very last one is the pink and cream. Move that position over. It goes between the pink and the cream. We bring this down. We bring the gray piece over. And we move it up. And we are solved. And that's how I do the Meg Minx. Here's just a tip. In my previous video when I had a situation like this and I was going to insert this corner into this slot, if the sticker that belonged on the bottom, in this case the white, was facing up, I would rotate this out of the way move it out of the way and reset this so that it would be facing not on top, either this way or this way. But what you can do instead of that, if you want, is you can just leave it right here and repeat what we know is the sexy move as many times as it takes until it puts it down here correctly. The sexy move is R U R prime U prime. That did not do it, so we'll do it again. R, U, R prime, U prime. That didn't do it. And now it's actually pointed the way we know how to insert it with a normal insertion, but I'll just keep doing this sexy move. R, U, R prime, U prime. And there it is. So that makes that easier if you don't want to try to manipulate it so the sticker faces either left or right. Here's just a troubleshooting tip. When you have all of the first couple of layers done, all of your gray cross done, but the edges are not oriented correctly. In my demo video originally, it was an easy case where I could just position one of the two stationary ones, like this, the pink, and I needed you need two that are adjacent. I wanted, that are correct, I wanted this cream color to be over here, and it was fortunate because it was at one of these slots. The way this particular case is, I could do soon a million times, and it's not going to move this one, so I'm not ever going to get that over there. Same thing with this. So if I oriented it like this, we know these two are stationary, it would move the cream, but I could only move it to there or to there. It's not going to move it to here. So what, there are algorithms for this, but what I do is I just keep experimenting until I find a case where I can move one of the ones I want. And again, it looks like, okay, I have orange. I want to get green over here, but I can't because it's stationary. Same thing if I rotated this, I can't get the green here because it's stationary. So what I do in this case is I just do a soon and see what that does with the positions and see if I can go from there. So the soon again is R, U, R prime, U, R, and then U, three, one, two, three, and then R prime. So now I will look and see what that did. All right, so if I align the green, okay, that has helped because I want pink over here. It's not there right now, but it is here. So I know I can do either a soon move, which will move it counterclockwise to here, and then I could do another soon move. It would skip these two stationary ones and move it to here, and that's where I want it. 
or I could do an anti-soon, which moves it clockwise, and just have to do that once to here. So I'll show you the anti-soon move. So what that is, again, these are going to be stationary, and we're aiming to move this one to here, this one will go up to here, and this one will go to here. So the anti-soon move is starting with R towards you, so R prime, then a U prime, an R, a U prime, an R prime towards you. Instead of a U prime twice, we do a U prime three times. One, two, three. And then return the R. So that has moved them. Let's reorient this gray slice to see how we did. And we have green and orange, which are great. Now that they are together, we can position it the way we want, which is where these two fixed ones are adjacent and are right. And we do the moves to fix these other three. So it's either a soon or an anti-soon. And in this case, we know we want the cream to move this way, which is counterclockwise which is a soon move. So we do R, U, R prime, U, R, U, three, R prime. And that has correctly righted all of the edge pieces. At the very end, when we are on the gray slice, of course our star edges are correct. All of the gray is facing up for the corners, and we're just trying to now put the corners in their proper places. You know that you mess up some of this down here, but it's all right and not to panic while you're going on. But what the next step always is, and I've done a couple, is you look at the sticker that you've moved that's out of place, and you didn't just see what I did, but it's this one. Normally it has gray on it. In this particular case, we still have some corners that are wrong, but we don't have gray down here. Don't worry about it. Just move this to any of these wrong positions. So we'll insert it here, for example. We'll bring this one down and pretend as if this belonged in between here. So we'll just bring this one down like we do before. We'll bring this piece that we're replacing over to where it was, and we'll bring it back up. Now we have a piece down here that's got gray and we can continue. So this is orange and blue. Find the orange and blue, that's there. So we bring it down. We move our gray over to that piece and bring it back up. Now again, we look to see, and the piece we're looking for is either always here or here, if you remember. So this is the gray piece that has orange and green. We position the slot, so it's between the orange edge and the green edge right here. We bring this piece down to get it. We bring the gray over and we bring it up. And that has solved it. So don't panic if you have one that turns out not to have gray on it when you're down here because as these get disrupted during the process, that can happen. 